This is Coombe Cassis Rifle TV in association with MTK Global. We're at Newlands Gym here in, in Wickford in Essex. Shout out to uh, Riley and Lee Wilson for letting us use their gym today. Uh, joined by Johnny Fisher. Johnny, first time actually interviewing you in person because obviously the couple of times we have uh, done interviews have been over Zoom and Zoom ain't good for no one. No, it's not, especially when Sam Jones is on it with you as well. Uh, we had, remember we done one with Sam and Adam, that was, that was good, but um, it's good to see you finally in person. Absolutely. Johnny, do you know that you mentioned Sam Jones there? The only time Sam Jones is really helpful in a joint interview is when it's Joe Joyce, because obviously Joe's sometimes a little bit minimal with his words, as everyone knows, so Sam's there to kind of fill in the gaps. But yeah, you're right. Sam does yeah. like the sound of his own voice. Sorry, Sam. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true, but he talks us all up. He does, he's brilliant at his job, so he allows us to do our boxing and he does the talking. Absolutely. Um, you probably couldn't get many better... No. Uh, people who are going to promote you in that kind of uh, vocal way like Sam does, so shout out to Sam Jones. Shout out to Sam. Absolutely. Um, right, debut, off and done. So that must have been a relief to kind of just get that that one and oh, because there is a lot of anticipation, a lot of people, eyes on you, the division you're in, the platform you're on. Um, pressure going into that fight? Yeah, there was. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't be lying to say there was massive pressure on me, not not from what I put on myself, but there was people, a lot of people supporting me, and it's great to have that support. I had people like Tyson Fury shouting me out, Lennox Lewis messaging me, and all my support from Essex and from Exeter to Uni, where I'm from. Brilliant to have it, but then you've got to go and deliver, and that, that was the big challenge on the debut, to deliver under that pressure. Absolutely, and in the division you're in, um, obviously it's going to be talked about more so than any other weight category, we know that, but... Um, on that domestic scene, it seems that we're in a position now when you take out kind of your top level guys, your, your Furies, Joshua's, Dylan White's, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in in this country, the rest of the division is kind of almost wide open. Like you wouldn't have to have too many fights before you were in contention to face one of these guys at domestic level. That's it. There's some great talent coming through. Me and uh, Daniel Dubois going up to spar Fabio uh, tomorrow. He's got a great fight coming up. There's great talent coming through, not only from Matchroom, but Frank Warren. There's other guys coming through as well on the international scene. So it's wide open. There's fights to be made. And that's why when I do step up, I've got to make sure I'm ready because I'm only young. I just turned 22 last week. So I've got a lot of time. But I'm, when I've got to make that step up, I'll be ready when I need to. Fucking 22. Yeah. Look Jesus. About, I look about 40 years old, don't I, a lot of people say. <laughs> um, right, so we know you, yourself and, and Daniel were here at Newlands yesterday sparring. We saw, saw the social media. That's the only reason, to be honest with you, because obviously I live not too far from here and I, I recognise the gym and you were sparring. But how did you find the sparring with, with Daniel yesterday? Yeah, it was brilliant. Listen, it was only a light bit of sparring, like technical sparring, getting ready, for getting Daniel back into it and obviously my first spar back as well. So we're going up to spar Fabio tomorrow. So it was preparing us for that. We've done five minute rounds. You can feel Daniel's strength, very powerful and he, he seems more hungry than ever. So it's great to have him in the camp and we can spur each other on. We are waiting kind of news on, on when officially Daniel will return, but we are hoping that he does return kind of sooner rather than later. But, I mean, when you're in and around him, um, I haven't actually been around him since, obviously, his fight with, with Joe. But does he feel like, what's his attitude like? Is it like, oh, I can't wait to kind of get back and kind of prove a lot of people wrong? Or is he still a little bit down from the defeat? How is he? Well, you can, when you first thing you, you notice when you train around him, he's, he's an athlete, he's dedicated, and he, he puts everything in his heart and soul into it. And... To be around someone like that is brilliant for me, who's, who's also got a similar mentality. So he's ready to go. He's talking about fighting in the summer, which is brilliant, and he seems he seems hungry. I know he fought my good friend Joe Joyce and my training partner, basically. So for him, I was always backing Joe Joyce, and I always said, I made no bones about it, I think Joe's too soon for, for Daniel. But that was, doesn't take away from the fact I said Daniel's got great power, great strength, and he's got a great future ahead of him. So it could have been very awkward when he first came in, but we all, we're all grown ups here, and it, we're gonna we're gonna start working to improve now. Boxing's a funny old business in that way. Like you said, you're you're obviously part of S Jam, which represents uh, Joe, and you come in for sparring. It could have caused an awkward situation. Just that initial time. Obviously, you've got a job to do. You guys are sparring, but that initial moment could have been awkward. But it wasn't. No, it wasn't at all because we we we're, we're professionals at the end of the day. This is this is a business, not only a sport and entertainment. We know that we we've got to have our have our wits about us and be and be ready for whatever comes to us. And I never I never bad mouth Daniel at all. I always said he's a great he's a great fighter and he will be a great champion. So the task now for Jimmy Tibbs, Mark Tibbs and all of us together is to make sure we all get to that level when we need to. Absolutely. Um define for me what light sparring is. Because when it comes to heavyweights, how do you light spar? It's not really light sparring, so 
we was we weren't really going we were more body spying yesterday I would, I would describe it as we was we was heavy shots into the body and we was doing five minute rounds so it's pacing it it was a slower pace but it doesn't mean it doesn't erupt every now and then so it's great to be in in the mix with someone like Daniel who's who's got obviously immense power when he walks in first thing you notice the size of his back his upper body is absolutely huge so to be mixing it with someone like that who's got that physicality to him fantastic for me how do you assess from a sparring uh, perspective his power and did you get any feedback how he felt your punches after the spar? We didn't really, we don't, Daniel doesn't say much the best of times so he's quite a quiet lad as it, as it is in general but we've got, you can tell we've got that respect for each other and we can acknowledge that when we are doing bag work and other stuff we can see we've got power both of us and for, for us it's about, it's not about saying oh he can do this, he can do that, we're bringing each other on. So it don't matter what, what qualities we both bring, we can learn off each other. And we're learning head movement, stuff like that, jab, getting our jabs off in different ways. So with all the team we've got around us, we're, we're excited to see where we can go. We, we know, all know how Daniel is around interviews. It, it seems like at times he doesn't really like doing interviews. He kind of does them because it's a kind of a requirement as opposed to he willingly <laughs> wants to do it. But in and around kind of a situation you're with him when you're sparring him, is he kind of quiet in that respect as well? He's still quiet, but he's a very friendly chap. Like, we, we go running and stuff over Hainault Forest and we have a good chat and he's he, he's just the way he is. Some people like that. Joe Joyce is similar. He's not he's not the most camera-friendly guy. He's, he's just relaxed and laid back and they're, they're very similar in that sense that they're both laid back. When they had the Joyce and Dubois build-up in the, in the fight, it was quite comical in a way, wasn't it? Because both of them weren't really talking. Good job Sam and Frank Warren were there as well. Yeah, I mean, I remember that build-up. To be honest with you, that, that first press conference that they actually had at BT was quite entertaining. It when is. people were looking at it thinking, it's Joe and, and Daniel here, what are, they, are these going to say? Are they even going to say anything? But it was good, the mix of Frank and, and Sam in there as well. But it actually turned out where you was expecting it to be nothing, it actually turned out to be quite entertaining. That was the thing, looking at the Good Morning Britain thing they've done as well, and it's going, no, I'm going to have you, you're going to have me, and it's just backwards and forwards. It's just like, what's going on a little bit? It's, it's great, great to watch, it's really entertaining. Um, but for you, like, while you're still kind of building your, your name and your trade in, in the pro ranks, sparring people like Daniel is going to help him and it's going to help you. Listen, it, it's not only me learning off Daniel, he's going to pick things off of me because everyone has different styles and different qualities. So for me to spar him, obviously I'm learning massively, but it's the same for me when I go to Joe Joyce or Dave Allen, Huey Fury, Cash Alley. I've sparred a lot, a lot of these top guys, Fabio Wardley. So for me to go and spar these different guys, I'm picking stuff off, their, off of their qualities and Daniel's obviously going to do the same when he spars me. I mean, it's obviously this question here, it relates to kind of Joe Joyce, how I think the age Joe was at when he turned professional, they wanted to kind of fast track him and... Um, put him in fights where sometimes I mean he took Ian Lewinson on his on his yeah, debut and then fight. yeah exactly on his debut so uh, in that respect for you it's not going to be the case there because you're 22 years old but is it about kind of building slowly and steady opponents at the right time so you don't kind of miss out a phase people talking about that kind of phase between domestic level and world level which is quite crucial is that something that you want to explore to get your experience well, listen i know i've got very limited amateur background and i've got to earn the right to even get to the domestic level first so it's not about me saying i can jump in fight these guys fight these guys calling other guys out i've got a very very long way to go to get to where i need to be i know i've got talent and raw potential but every step up every fight there'll be a little step up and matt gordon on my debut the way other prospects have dealt with him I'm really happy with how I dealt with him because no one else has put him, floored him twice in the fight. He's been in with some good prospects, really top quality guys. And for me to do that, that's the first test done. And now, put that behind me, I've got another test and take one fight at a time. That's, I know it's a cliche, but that's exactly what we've got to do with, my, with me and what my journey's going to be. Have you got a potential date when you could be out next for your second fight? I've been speaking to Sam. Sam's been talking to Eddie, sort of end of April, May time, we're hopefully looking at. So I want to be out every couple of months, really, um, for the first year, get my experience up. And that's going to be a, a big part of it for me, being in the experience of actually being in the ring. Because I had 10 amateur fights, I only have four senior amateur fights. It's going to be an exciting journey to see how I do progress in that first year, 18 months. Absolutely. I would like to get uh, Riley Wilson, actually, to come in on this. I don't know if he will. On, Riley. Riley, do you want to quickly come here, mate? Declines a lot of interviews, yeah. this chap. Just come, come, come and stand next to... Uh, it's about time we got Riley Wilson on uh, <laughs> IFL TV because we've used this, uh, this gym plenty of times enough. But you saw the spa yesterday between uh, Johnny and, uh, and Daniel. He described it as a light spa, then kind of changed the words. How was it, though? <laughs> you wouldn't want to be in the middle of it, that's for sure. <laughs> I, uh, no, it was a good bit of body sparring, but they're two strong men, so... 
he did get a few heavy shots went in, but no, very good sparring. Good to watch. What happens in sparring stays in sparring, <laughs> obviously. But um, Riley, just a, a little recap on you, really. You've, you and your dad have had this gym, Newland Gym here in, in Whitford for, for many years. You've had loads of top-level professionals yeah. come, not only yesterday, but you've had Billy Joe Saunders spent a camp here. Obviously, he was sparring here yeah. with, with Gary Spike O'Sullivan years ago as well. Yeah. But you've had him in and out of this gym over the years. Yeah, we've had loads here now. It's, um, it's only getting bigger and bigger, the gym now, with uh, Billy Joe, Kevin Mitchell. A lot of that's thanks to Jimmy Tibbs. He's a, we love having Jimmy down here. Kevin Neely with his boys, Danny Dignam, Danny Darko is a big list. Yeah, it's only getting better now. And you're starting to make your name now as a trainer. You're acquiring more yeah. fighters and kind of early steps for you in that, in that respect. Yeah, I've just got my pro licence, building up steady. Just uh, taking, taking small steps forward. OK, OK. He talks a little bit more than Daniel Dubois, but not a lot more. <laughs> no, but it's, it's good enough, it's good enough. Um, I'll swing back round to you, uh, Johnny. Have you got anything else you'd like to add before uh, we finish, Johnny? Just uh, thank you to Riley for letting us use the gym. It's been great the last couple of weeks while Daniel set, set, settles in. We're normally based down at Origin Gym in Raynham with uh, Kevin Reynolds, and that's a, that's a really great base for us. And that's where the home of Mark Tibbs Boxing is going to be. But to come up Newlands and have a great welcome here, it's been fantastic as well. And I'm, I'm just enjoying the journey. And I'm excited to see where I can go because I don't know how far I can go. I really don't. But it's, that's why it's exciting to watch. Absolutely. You're a very, very good talker as well. I knew you was a good talker, but you are actually, you don't hesitate, you don't pause, you just literally say what you say. It's yeah, brilliant. That's it. Well, going to Exit Uni, you've got to compete with some very clever old bods up there, so you'll do your best. To your boy from Romford up in Exeter, you've got to uh, do your best to compete. All right, no problem. Well, Johnny Fisher, uh, the Romford Ball, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV, and uh, we'll catch up with you again. Uh, when your next fight date is announced. Yep, I hope it won't be long. I'm, I'm in training now, so I'm, I'm ready to go whenever. Lovely. Coombe Cassius here, Johnny Fisher, Newlands Gym for IFL TV. Thank you very much.